angels were finally rescued, but they kept working. Things were beginning to look grim. By 1945, more prisoners were dying, and food had become scarce, with each individual taking in only about 700 calories per day. The camp was on a rapidly ticking clock, with each second weighing heavier than the last. Then, in February 1945, the nurses were finally liberated in Manila, and all 77 nurses, as well as all other surviving POW, were freed. Remarkably, every angel survived. Still, their work wasn't over. After the battle in Manila, the nurses helped care for the American soldiers who had rescued them before finally being relieved of duty weeks later. One survivor recalled leaving camp weighing only 75 pounds. She'd entered camp almost three years previous, weighing 130 pounds. Maud Davison and Josephine Nesbitt took the lead to keep the group's spirits up. Being interred as prisoners of war is perhaps one of the most frightening experiences one could endure. One is always a deafening gunshot or swift flick of a knife away from being just one more casualty in a long list of fallen heroes. Fortunately for the Angels of Baton, they had leaders like Mon Davidson and Josephine Nesbitt lighting their way. Together, the two laid out routines for the other nurses to follow in order to establish a sense of normalcy, with nurses being required to work four hours per day. And if any of the nurses were too weak, then either Davison or Nesbitt would take over their shift personally. Several nurses kept diaries of their struggles. From witnessing the destruction of local civilians' homes, to experiencing their own personal emotional traumas, being imprisoned quickly took its toll on the angels. In order to document these daily struggles, and perhaps in an effort to maintain sanity, several of the nurses kept diaries of their time in the Japanese camps. In an entry discovered years later, one angel documented a particularly brutal end to one of the American soldiers who was tied and bound in the harsh heat of the jungle before being shot in the back. She wrote whether he died instantly or wounded and bleeding lived on until he finally died, we will never know. But this cruel, heartless and brutal treatment filled us all with deep grief and sorrow. Ruth Straw, another angel, described a Baton Field Hospital, the horrible tragedies she witnessed toward humanity, and her intense hunger. It is jungle land and everyone lives under trees. Rows of beds snuggled under the trees with narrow winding paths between them and the night sky overhead. Japanese overhead about 11.30 bombing. Again, many women and children killed, injured and burned. What will become of all of us? One soldier brought in a four-month-old Filipino baby. Both parents were killed during the bombing. I am so hungry rice, cold salmon and tomatoes. Couldn't eat any of it. The Japanese used captured American nurses and soldiers as human shields while advancing on the Allies. On April 9, 1942, the American soldiers stationed at Baton were overpowered by the Japanese army and forced to surrender. With nowhere else to go, those remaining were ordered by Lieutenant General Jonathan Wainwright to Corregidor, two miles from Baton. Despite direct orders, the nurses initially refused to go instead opting to stay with their patients, but the threat of the Japanese was too dangerous. They had to go. The angels were moved around from field hospital to camps, and eventually the army nurses were interned at Santo Tomas internment camp in Manila, while the Navy nurses moved north to the Los Banos internment camp. The 
angels called themselves the battling bells of Baton. While the nurses performed their duties night and day in the sweltering jungle, the U.S. and Filipino soldiers fought on as the Japanese advanced. The problem was, like the angels, the soldiers on the island were not as adeptly trained as those in other campaigns, and were unfortunately outfitted with somewhat obsolete weaponry. Along with the constant threat of the next assault, there was the sweltering heat of the jungles, the 100% humidity levels, and the acrid dust storms that kept Allied forces from ever gaining the advantage. Despite the odds against them, the roughly 72,000 Allied members were determined to drive back the onslaught. Because of their determination, the soldiers gave themselves the moniker, Battling Bastards of Baton, and the women referred to themselves as the Battling Bells of Baton. They were the first large group of women to face combat conditions in WW2. The Japanese assault on the Philippines was relentless. Palms continued to fall all across Manila as the nurses desperately tried to save the lives of wounded soldiers. Eventually, U.S. forces had no choice but to retreat into the Baton Peninsula. Once there, the nurses set up makeshift cots and camps in order to continue their service. Over the course of four months, the nurses saw roughly 6,000 patients in 18 open-air camps, but most were eventually taken to the Santo Tomas internment camp in Manila, from which they were eventually liberated. Along with soldiers' artillery wounds, the nurses were also faced with treating malaria and dysentery from their time in the jungle. They weren't being pushed from the frying pan into the fire, rather, they were being pushed into a slow cooker as the conflict raged on. The attack on the Philippines was devastating and sent the angels into crisis mode. Just days before Pearl Harbor, it seemed the women had a life of leisure, there were hardly any medical concerns, and some days they were able to sunbathe and play tennis. Less than 12 hours after the event, the Philippines became the next target. Bombs were dropped on Manila by Japanese Zero fighter planes, and soon the hospitals were swamped with casualties. Now. The nurses were being thrust headfirst into WW2's horrors. The Angels were stationed in the Philippines before Japan made their strike on Hawaii. Originally stationed in the Philippines in 1941, when WW2 broke out, the Angels of Baton were female army nurses who enjoyed being stationed at Manila because they were able to see the world while also enjoying the beautiful natural landscape. While the nurses got along with the Filipino natives for the first three weeks, everything changed on December 8th, the day which will forever live in infamy. After almost the entire American fleet was destroyed in the attack on Pearl Harbor, Josephine Nesbitt, one of the veteran nurses who would eventually help keep the angels together, told the women, girls, you've got to sleep today. You can't weep and wail over this, because you have to work tonight. Soon, bombs would start dropping on the Philippines, but the angels were prepared. Hey guys, thank you so much for the support and likes and comments down below. And also, thank you so much for watching, and I look forward to see you in the next video then. Take care. Bye.